Well, whether it's us here on Delmarva Life or everyone back in the news department, we strive to be just people to watch on TV. We want to be someone you can trust, more like family. Yeah. So in an effort to help you get to know us a little bit better, the Marble Life Sean Stryker is going to be sitting down with different members of the WBOC family for a chat. First up on the list, Steve Hammond. Sean sat down with Steve earlier this week and... Well, he could quite arguably be one of the most recognizable men on Dalmarva. After all, he's made a living reporting the news at WBOC for the past 28 years. I'm talking about, of course, Steve Hammond. Steve, thanks so much for talking sure, to me. Sure, Sean. Good to be here. Yeah, so you've won numerous awards. You've told thousands upon thousands of stories. But today, if it's all right with you, I'd like to get to know a little bit more about you outside sure, the news station. Sure, sure. So you grew up uh, just outside of Baltimore, correct? Right, in Towson, Maryland. Mm -hmm. How was that? It was great. I grew up in a, in a community called Rogers Forge, which is near Towson. Uh, a really idyllic place to grow up as a kid. They had a great parks and rec department, and there were a ton of kids in my neighborhood. I had a bunch of friends. I was all about sports mm -hmm. all the time. I was going to ask you what you did. You're a big guy now. I'm 6'2". You're taller than me. Uh, were you dominant in sports? No, no, no I, wasn't, I wasn't dominant. I was, I was actually pretty skinny as a kid. <laughs> and, uh, but I played football uh -huh. uh, and I played lacrosse. And, and in Baltimore, lacrosse is everything. And I started playing lacrosse in like third grade mm -hmm. and, and played you know, all the way through. And did you play in high school as well? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, after high school, you went to the University of Delaware. Right. How was that fun? It was fun. Uh -huh. I had a good time, and uh, and it's a good school. And I graduated with a degree in in uh, mass communication. Uh, I didn't anticipate getting into the news business. I knew I was going to do something um, in communication, whether okay. it's public relations or advertising. Um, but my mom worked for Maryland Public Television. Wow. My sister was a producer for a show called Evening Magazine. And, uh, and my brother wrote music. He's a musician. He would write music for, for television. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I had been exposed to a lot of it um, growing up, and I did internships uh, in, out of college. Mm -hmm. and, and it was my time uh, in a newsroom in Baltimore that sort of the light came on, and I was a junior mm -hmm. in college. And I was like, wow, news is a lot of fun. And, and I, I feel this way today is that every day is different. Mm -hmm. uh, I walk into the newsplex, I never know what's going to happen, mm -hmm. what I'm going to be talking about that night uh, at six o'clock. Uh, some of it is really sad, uh, some of it is really uplifting, but you never know and, and no day is the same. So that's what drew you to it is just the not knowing what you're going to face each day. Right, initially and I was also um, I, I always like to be learning new things mm -hmm. and, and so uh, I learned a lot uh, early on and uh, and I'm still learning. Yeah. So after college you made uh, a brief stop in Philadelphia. Mm, WHYY is a PBS station uh, in, in Philadelphia but they had a news department, they still do in Wilmington, but back then uh, they did a half hour newscast and and you, you couldn't do this today but back then, you know, it was hard like it is now to get a job in, in television news and and I met with the news director up there and I said, I will work on your assignment desk for free for two weeks <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> as a tryout. Not many people are willing to do that. Well, I don't <laughs> think you can do that now with HR rules being what yeah. they are. But back then, I did. Yeah. This was 1985. And, and uh, I said, I'll work for free for two weeks. And if you, and if you like what I do, then, then you can hire me. If not, then you got two weeks <laughs> worth of free work. And, and I busted my butt. for oh, you know, sure I, you was, I was in at 7 o'clock in the morning. Oh. I wasn't leaving until 7 o'clock at night. But, wow. and it, it, worked out. And then you made the move down to Salisbury in 1987. Mm -hmm. Was it nice being able to work in Wilmington and then in Salisbury so close to home in Baltimore? Um, I, yes, it was nice to be close to home. It wasn't why I made any of the decisions I did. It mm -hmm. just so happened that, that things worked out that they were close to where I grew up. Um, I came to WBOC for an opportunity to, uh, to do some reporting initially. Uh, I was hired to be the, the bureau chief. I was the first bureau chief ever hired uh, for Dover. And, and back then, uh, I was reporting. I anchored a little bit of news out of there mm -hmm. and, and was sort of running the, the bureau. So what, at what point did Del Marva become your home? Because if you ask me now, where's your home? I'll still say New Jersey. Sure. I've just been here for a short, short, a short period of time. I, you know, I, I don't know. I, I would say... Oh, after probably about five or six years, mm -hmm. I had no intention initially of, of 
staying here. As like, most like, people don't. Like but, most yeah. people, they come, uh, they get their experience, and they move on. But I got, as they say, sand in my <laughs> shoes, and I realized that Delmarva was a really great place to live. It's a great place to raise a family. Mm -hmm. um, it is close to, to Baltimore or Washington or Philadelphia mm -hmm. or New York City, for that matter. Yeah. Um, and so, and I, I like uh, doing things on the water. And then you raise your, you're raising